we're back in action. And we're back. Welcome to Brothers Green. This is not about food. Third podcast with just Josh and I today. Sorry if you were expecting someone fancy or special. Nope. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. Nor do we have any sponsors yet. We are just plain old Greenfield Brothers. Yeah. Living the dream. <laughs> <laughs> What's the dream? Oh god, I don't know. Well, welcome back. It's been a little while. Sorry that we've been out of commission. We've been busy. God damn it. Lay off of us, all right? No apologizing. <laughs> Why is yours peaking a little bit? I'm peaking. Sorry. Sorry. It's okay. Let's turn yours down a little bit. Technical difficulties, but we're back. We're coming to you from my new apartment in Park Slope, Brooklyn. Beautiful Park Slope, right by Prospect Park. If you're ever in Brooklyn, New York in general, come to Prospect Park, walk around. That's actually what we are doing today, which brings us here. Yeah, we were going mushroom hunting, and might seem dangerous to some people. <laughs> There's some deadly mushrooms that will do some terrible things to you. Let's just say if we drop dead in the middle of this podcast, yeah. blame it on Josh. Yeah, <laughs> we, I take no responsibility <laughs> for anything. But we went foraging, which is the act of hunting for wild things, I guess, that aren't animals. You're really hunting. You're hunt. Oh, you're. You have a knife, but I don't know what call it hunting. <laughs> All right, gathering. You can call it gathering. Yeah. All right, so it's not we, like we had to chase anything. Yeah, but we, we were, did have to like really get in the woods and climb fences, uh, and you know, at first the first hour or so we didn't find shit, and then. Well, Josh is like a semi expert these days. I was just look looking around, hanging out, and he's spotting mushrooms. We hit the jackpot. We hit the jackpot. All right, we actually just ate some of our. What are they called? Magic puff globes? Balls. Puff balls. Giant puff balls. If you look up online, you just type in giant puff ball mushrooms. You'll see what we're talking about. They are one of the foolproof four, which means they don't have any poisonous lookalikes. There's one poisonous lookalike, but only at a very <laughs> early stage. Um, and there are easy ways to tell if it's not a poisonous one. I feel like that's one of the worst things to recommend to people. Just go pick these mushrooms. They're like, I'm not recommending. All right, yeah. we are not recommending no, you no. pick any mushrooms at all because that would be the worst thing you can do. But if you do find wild mushrooms, they're delicious because we just sauteed some up. Some are delicious. Some are some lethal. <laughs> so go with your expert. Find an expert. Do a lot of research. There are a couple. There are four that. Um, are pretty easy to identify once you learn. These ones safe. were really easy. They were literally just huge white balls. They look like a like a volleyball. And if you cut into them, they're pure white on the inside, and they Soft. taste similar. When you cook them down, they tasted exactly like scrambled eggs, really tender yeah, scrambled really tender. eggs. It was crazy. Delicious. They'll take on any flavor. And we also got one other mushroom, the hen of the woods. Yeah, my called maitake. I haven't cooked that, that up. up. That's really cool looking too. Yeah, that looks special, all right. I don't know too much about how you cook that one, but saute it. Those are the two that I was hoping to find because I knew they were in the forest and I knew that they were supposed to be good. Yeah. Never had them before. And they were, well, one is really tasty. Hopefully it doesn't kill us. I think we're all right no, at we're this fine. point. We're fine. We're fine. Yeah. Um, there is the only poisonous lookalike uh, never gets to be that big and there's one other bad lookalike but when you cut it inside it's black and it's hard so if you see a huge this thing was like two softballs yeah. put and there's together no, there's no stem it's just just a, a big, big ball. white ball cut into it and it's just white in no way am I recommending you actually yeah. do it but if you have to if Make you live sure in New York right. City, you know, um, they might have this elsewhere, but in New York City, there's this guy called Wild Man Steve Brill, and he will go around and you, know, you, you pay him $15, $20, and he'll take you on a tour of the, the famous main parks in New York, and he'll show you everything that you can eat. He's an expert, and you can go and you can just hang out, or you can go and you can collect. It's an awesome experience, not just mushrooms, but all the wildlife, like, you know, all the berries. And all the greens, and yeah. you'd be amazed how much stuff is edible. And it's crazy how much parts. knowledge you have now from doing it. It's like, it seems like once you're awakened or awoken to this new world of foraging, you just never stop looking for it. And all of a sudden, like, it just becomes clear. And yeah. you just 
Let me just close the close the window. Street yeah. cleaners are coming by, pissing us off. Legally parked. Yeah, I I've been doing it for maybe four years now, and you know, just like any hobby, like at first I was definitely a little bit more, you know, just like doing it for fun. And like at first I really tried to learn, but then I took took some time off. But now I've been really hitting hard on the mushroom knowledge, and learning a lot. I mean, you watch a lot of YouTube videos, read books. I have like an app that helps you identify stuff. And it's crazy because it's one of those hobbies that, let me tell you, pays off because yeah. you go to buy these wild mushrooms in the market and it's like $25 a pound at Whole Foods or something. And you can literally go, I live 100 yards from the park. I could walk out there in the morning, pick one of these fuckers and I'm um, eating delicious free free wild mushrooms that no one else is going to get. Yeah, I mean, some of the ones we got today, for example, that you're not seeing them at the market. I've never seen those. Yeah. Neither of those. And they're in, like some of the it's best. It's like an underground been. world that only a few people get to enjoy. It's crazy. Yeah. And we, we ran into somebody else that was, it was funny. We, we were walking around one way and we saw these people come from the other way and, and they saw we had some stuff. So we started talking to them and they were like, oh, you know, we haven't seen anything. I'm like, oh. I guess the way they went is probably bad, and we, yeah. we walked that way, and we found, like, most of our stuff. Like, they just must have completely yeah. missed it. Definitely sensed a little bit of jealousy when they, you can tell, they're like, they, they see your stash, and they're like, god damn it. you can go, and you can spend hours, and yeah. nothing, you know. And it's crazy, like, your whole reality changes once you've gotten your first mushroom. It's like, you're walking around, you're a little sad in the beginning, you're, you're, you're empty handed, and all of a sudden you get that one. Yeah, just and then we, we got the one mushroom, you're feeling pretty good, and then when you're feeling good, the rest just flows. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, then it's just endless mushrooms. Yeah, you stop caring, because like, we could have walked home with that, and that would have been, Yeah. it was a huge, I mean, huge mushroom. They cooked down to be small, but even just that, I would have been happy like yeah. we did it. We did it. You taste <laughs> you it. You have to at least do it. And when you do eat them, no matter what, even if they are safe, it's good to eat just a little bit first. Like, take a couple bites. We may have gone a little overboard, but <laughs> a couple bites just to make sure. Because even though they are safe and they're not poisonous, some people, you know, may have a little bit of an upset stomach. Um, it's it's not often, but it's it's good. It's just like introducing any new food yeah, to your body. You never know how you're going to react to anything, yeah. really. Yeah, people might have allergies and whatever. But um, mushrooms are fantastic if you don't have the best reaction to say something like meat or even fish. Such a good replacement. And a lot of times the wild mushrooms are like the meaty bastards. Yeah. That's when you get the oyster mushrooms and the shiitake, that's the stuff that tastes like meat and can really replace some of that stuff, which we both, I feel like, have been doing with some delicious mushrooms. Yeah, good mushrooms. Last time I went, I got a ton of oyster mushrooms. There's another one. Another one that's uh, foolproof is uh, it's called Chicken of the Woods. Oh yeah, that one. If you look that up, it's beautiful looking. It's like very distinct, orange, yellow. Uh, Before I knew what that was, I when I saw it, I was like, oh, this has to be fucking poisonous because this looks scary. Yeah. That's one of the the mushrooms that just looks seriously poisonous, but you can eat. And you were saying how. If you're in the woods walking around and you see the standard looking like button or portobello mushrooms, those are the ones that you can't eat. Yeah, I mean some of them you can, but like the the five like most deadly ones, they you know look like regular mushrooms. They have a stem and a cap, and like a ring. Yeah. And those. And they're yeah. filled with deadly. And usually toxins. a lot of them don't grow in like big bunches either. A lot of times they'll just be like one just chilling there. Yeah. Um, yeah, but people use them to poison people because it's, it's. I don't think it's untraceable, but it's one of those things where, you know, you, you die like mushroom and like twelve hours you're fine, and then twelve hours later, you know, good luck. That's got to be the best way to kill someone. Well, <laughs> you're not suggesting it, but, <laughs> but people have served them in soups, you know. So yeah, it's, that's it's true. Crazy. I had a, a bit of a scare when you I was watch. when I was first getting into foraging. I thought I recognized something. But I wasn't positive of when it was, um, yeah, if it was the right season. Because yeah. sometimes, like, if for, for not for mushrooms, but for greens, they have different seasons. So certain seasons, they're good to eat. Other seasons, you're not supposed to. So I'm looking it up online, and, and I had just tasted a little bit in my mouth and spit it out. And I found what it was. It's called gout weed. It kind of tastes like parsley. It's amazing. And I'm looking on the website, and it's like, be, warning, 
uh, like there is a known lookalike, like this thing called uh, water hemlock, and it's uh, like one of the most deadly plants <laughs> in the world. And like my heart just stopped. I was like, oh fuck. And Jackie was like, "Who's Jackie?" Jackie, girlfriend. Uh, my girlfriend Jackie. She was like, "Uh, what's going on?" I was like, "Oh, nothing, nothing. I'm good." She's like, "What are you, What are you reading?" I was like, oh, "You know, just just checking stuff out. I'm still trying to find like you know what. How do I can tell?" Um, but it was. I mean, it was scary because my heart started to race right when I realized it. Um, we ended up having to call an ambulance, and we like rushed to this ambulance and. At that point, it had been like a little, you know, it had been like 30 minutes and I was feeling okay still. And I didn't, really didn't eat much. And, and I figured I was fine. I, but what I realized is that I don't drink caffeine. And I had just like, my, my girlfriend, she had this um, like drink, it, but it, it was way too sweet for her. It tasted like candy. So I ended up drinking the whole thing. So at that moment, the caffeine started to hit me. I started to feel like I was like getting, yeah, getting pretty weird. So I had a little bit of a scare. Um, but then I realized it was just that and everything was fine. Nothing happened. But <laughs> that was the, like, it was a moment like that where you realized, like, all right, I need to be. A that lot was hilarious when this. Josh told our parents about that event. They're, you know, foraging, it seems like child's play until you hear something like that. And then they're not too happy that you're walking in the woods yeah. picking random shit. <laughs> but, you know, it, it kind of wakes you up. You're like, all right, I need to, yeah. I need to take this more seriously. And that's one of, I, I, I don't know, I, I think that's. There is a bit of a thrill in foraging. You're walking around in the woods. That's kind yeah. of dangerous in some ways. And then you're picking random shit. You never know what you're going to get. Yeah. There's like a, there's a bit of a thrill. It's fun. And some places you'll go, once you start noticing mushrooms, they're everywhere. Like places, that, you know, mushrooms basically grow uh, in the ground or in dead trees or in the woods. Even hallucinogenic mushrooms grow like on shit, on cow shit. Yeah. They can also grow in, in other places. Um, it seems like once you... Once you, like, all right, I went today for the first time, and I saw where the mushrooms grow. Now I know, I have an idea of where to look. Yeah. Next time, I can just go to those spots. It's like, you know, like, all right, this, this kind of grows out of the corner of this log, and you're, you're, you have an eye out for those spots. Yeah, you have those eyes. Because when I'm walking by it today, and I have no idea, you're spotting these mushrooms that are in the corners of these trees. What the yeah, fuck? kind of in the ground, and you know where to look. And there are places, you know, when it, if it, Mushrooms grow when it rains, so if it's really rainy, you know that they, they sprout grow, right they after grow the really rain. Fast. Correct? They, they grow like yeah. incredibly fast. Um, they grow in a day or two; they'll be huge. It's like when you see those time lapses on like a yeah. planet Earth, and it's just like exactly it just shoots out of the ground. So you, it's good to go right after it rains. Um, but if you go to places like in Seattle where it's wet, I was just there, and they have like literally mushrooms. Yeah, like you're, you're walking and they're just lined everywhere. Just these crazy different looking mushrooms. I think I have some. So is that overwhelming to to it, be in a place like that where there's just too many mushrooms? Well, it makes me wish that I knew more. Whenever yeah. I go to those places, I'm like, if I knew more about a lot of mushrooms, you could be feasting. Oh yeah, I would be killing it. Like if, for instance, like there's you know, and I'll put these pictures up, but like this the one, hell is I you know it looks I, like a honeycomb or I something. I thought I think it was a puffball. But I ended up not having yeah. a chance to do it. It looks like when it could have also changed yeah, into something. Yeah, it could have been it. a puffball. Then there that are these, looks which good. Those, aren't, those aren't edible. Oh, all right. Um, then there are like these kind of standard looking portobello ones. That. And these are like chanterelles. That looks actually, like a chanterelle. But they're not. They're not. <laughs> I would have been they, like, are, they are a chanterelle, but they're not an edible one. Wow. Um, then there are these, which actually look a lot like. Wow. Uh, hallucinogenic. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if you see any blue, is, if you see any blue lines in the mushrooms, you're probably gonna start tripping, mother, or you're gonna die. Holy hell. chicken of the woods! We, I was driving and I saw this tree. I was like, "Stop the car!" We drove back and it was the entire tree. Did you get it? Oh, you lot. got that? Yeah. Yeah. We chicken got, of the woods, you can't miss. It looks like chicken feathers. Yeah, it's orange. It is crazy looking. But, we saw a few possible potential chicken of the woods today. One thing that's interesting is one of the most deadly mushrooms looks a lot like. Um, hallucinogenic mushrooms. If you look at the pictures next to each other, they're pretty similar. Yeah. But um, there's there are some differences. Like the the poisonous one has a ring on the stem. Yeah. As a, and the other one doesn't. Yeah. So uh, that could have been a big thing of hallucinogenic mushrooms. That's crazy. Which 
But you, you also have like the blue color to it. Yeah, the blue that brings me brings me back to a story. Um, back in '08, I was at Bonnaroo, and we were, we got there right away, and we were hunting for mushrooms, the ones that make you feel different kind of hunting. Yeah. looking for like <laughs> Not, an old hippie. We weren't weird gathering. Guy. We were yeah. waiting for a hippie to come around, and yeah. and this this hustler comes by, and he's off. He's like, these are these are the best mushrooms, and they were just gold capped. And like they, I, I had no knowledge of hallucinogenic mushrooms at the time, and we bought them right away because we were anxious young kids, and we ate them, and we were just convinced that something was going to happen. We sat there for an hour. I'm sure a lot of people have been in that situation when they got some sort of fake, yeah. you know, product, yeah, and oh yeah. you're just waiting. And you, it's crazy what you can convince your mind to to think or to react to, because you almost are tripping just from being like does that look like it's moving oh my god did that just move real quick I, I, it's so true i did the same but it, thing. but an hour and a half goes by and finally we give up or two hours goes by and he we just got sold completely fake mushrooms there were no like they were just they look like golden mushrooms like who knows maybe there are hallucinogenic mushrooms like that but these were nothing next day these these true hippies come by and they we you know we weren't convinced at this point we we're like tell us that the you know why these are hallucinogenics and they're like look at the blue man look yeah. at the blue and we looked at them and there was just blue veins running through them like they were just poisonous poisonous mushrooms like they looked deadly and we ate them and <laughs> let me tell you <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you then things started to move yeah, the blue i had the same thing i went to a wilco show and we found some stuff and now looking back like i've dehydrated like oyster mushrooms and they're yeah. probably just dehydrated oysters that look like they're tripping but if you have the blue color like it's kind of bluish purple yeah running down the a little stem. bit of green maybe yeah that's those are the good ones those are those are the good ones yeah. Again, not recommending any of this, but if you do yeah. come into the situation where you're, yeah, there, uh, there's some crazy stuff to you. It's been a long time, but that's a lot of mushroom talk. A lot of mushroom <laughs> talk. There's, the mushrooms are amazing. I mean, they're really good for you. They can kill you. They can make you trip balls. Yeah, like they, it's they crazy. Don't if, have that much. If of you variety. actually read up about how they grow and how some, like the reason you can't. Um, you know, just you don't see regular mu or these wild mushrooms growing or sold, sorry, in regular markets is because they can't grow them because it's insane how they grow. They grow off hundred year old trees yeah. that have been there forever. And it's like a whole underground world of spores. And I have no fucking idea. Yeah, Maybe I mean, one day hard. I'll get into it. But mushrooms are, they're a crazy Crazy. It's true. I wonder if the puff balls were like market sale, like how crazy people would go over them. I don't know. I think it, it's got to be so hard for to integrate a food like that into a market without any knowledge. Like, yeah. how do you market that? It's true. Wow. You know, because I've never heard. There's like there's like four wild mushrooms that people know about: chanterelles, shiitakes, oysters, and what's morels. Yeah. All the other ones, I got no idea. Yeah. A lot of them have really weird names, like Polyprus ruciminus and, and like that kind of stuff. And yeah. they all like have their scientific name because like polypores are a certain type of mushroom. But mushrooms are good. Well, moving on from mushrooms, <laughs> we thought it would be fun to respond to some comments on our YouTube page. Yeah. We, I mean, most of the comments are good, but... For me, one of the things, like in the episode we put out today, you want to go to that? One. Yeah, let me read this one. Let's see here. I, oh. So Mike and I just filmed a little series. You have much more culinary talent that has been on display in your most recent few videos. I'm hoping this dorm room nuking series is, oh, is just a brief phase, please. Kel M. Hill. Kel M. Hill, thank you. So I did respond to that. Um, and got a lot of thumbs up, which we appreciate. So but we got more thumbs up on the response than on your yeah. comment, you asshole. <laughs> <laughs> we win. No, the, but the truth is, uh, we appreciate you asking that because we, we, you know, we're we're glad that you like the other stuff. But 
you know, when Mike and I were going through college, I remember sitting in college and I, I was on the crew team and before crew I'd put on the TV and, you know, I was so into football, but I watched Rachel Ray. Did I watch Rachel Ray because I had a choice? <laughs> I had I a hope choice. Not. I mean, I had a choice between watching food TV or not watching food TV, but I didn't have a choice beyond that. There wasn't, you know, YouTube cooking channels. There wasn't another cooking channel. It was just the Food Network. And at that time, it was just Rachel Ray. I'm not saying that Rachel Ray wasn't a big influence. You know, she had some good recipes and some decent knowledge when you're starting out. Yeah. But Turkey, if there was, sliders. yeah, we, if there was something else. Yeah, um, we probably would have changed the channel. Yeah, exactly, and and we always felt like because of that, it was our sort of calling to make videos and to kind of go back and think about what we were cooking in college. Because maybe to us, like, sure, I'm not you know four in the morning like making pizza bagels, you know, and went in for breakfast, but I used to. I used to make. I've made hundreds of pizza bagels in my day. You know, and a lot of people don't think about that kind of stuff. And yes, it's simple, and sure, I can make much more complicated stuff. Like, there's no question, and my mic's the same way. But it's fun to show people, like, what they can do with just a little toaster oven. So this this series that we just did was really about, like, simple, fun, like, quick stuff. Not to say, hey, go make that, but just to give you the idea. You know, you can make pizza on a bagel. You can have pizza anytime. that. <laughs> Anytime, especially late night when you can, if you can avoid, the cool thing is you can buy a pack of bagels at the market. Yeah. You go once a week, you buy a pack of them, and then they're your late night munchies every night. You don't have to spend $5 on pizza every night. Yeah. You go back, you whip it up, it takes five minutes, and you won't wake up feeling as shitty. Yeah, it's just getting a such pizza. And it depends on how much you drank, but yeah. hopefully if you can avoid eating a whole pie of you know your local pizza joint but also you know we plan on doing this for a very long time and there's only so much food in the world you know so and we don't want to limit ourselves to just making a certain type of food because there are a lot of people out there that want to know how to do things you know maybe in a week there'll be different recipes up that might vibe with you more you know and if, if there's a recipe that you don't vibe with you know don't watch it or maybe watch it if you want to laugh or maybe you will learn something but uh, they, it also it takes us a long time to make these videos. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, What's your point there? it's a lot of work. So sometimes it's nice to do videos that are a little bit more simple. Um, I, I personally, like, like we were able to shoot, we just did this series and we shot pretty much 25 dishes in a day. Typically we'll do like five or six or seven. Um, and they were all really simple dishes, but you know, hopefully that there's a little something for everybody out there. I'm going to read another question. Are you high in this vid and after it? And that's a, that's a comment on the Magic Microwave Ice Cream Cake, uh, one of our top hit videos. Are we high in this vid? No, we are not high in this vid. Are you high after? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will say that this when we were making the Magic Herb Oil, and people have asked us a lot about what the ratio is, and it's kind of hard to say, you know. It, it's, it's recommended to get a lot of not high-quality stuff, you know, like a half an ounce or something. We, swag or whatever the yeah, hell. Yeah, swag. We, we ended up using just good-quality stuff, maybe like an, an eighth. Um, but, you know, it's, you can play around with that. There's uh, a few key steps you have to take and it doesn't really matter the ratios i mean you're going to get different potencies but you can actually screw it up and the main thing you can't do is or you shouldn't do when you're cooking the or infusing the oil is cook it too high you have to be patient i've screwed it up many times and this is only if you live in a california or a state where you can <laughs> of course do this. but you have to cook it low and slow and it's going to slowly infuse if you turn up the oil too high it's going to burn all of the goodness in your product and then you're then you're no then go you're screwed. but yeah other than that you know it doesn't really matter obviously the more stuff you put into it the more potent it's going to be try to cook it for around 30 minutes anywhere around that mark is pretty good on a really low heat just look for little little bubbles once you see the little bubbles Keep cooking it, and you're good. And then make sure when you're straining it, don't use anything plastic, or you'll melt that right into 
your oh, yeah. your batch and then you're screwed. And hey. the the other the other thing is when you're just making it, like I started to feel high just like being yes. in the room. So, so I was probably in that video, maybe I was a little bit Yes. You know, exactly. <laughs> I felt I felt it too. Mm -hmm. uh, but after, yeah, we were definitely a little pretty good. We didn't put much in. You saw in the video, we just gave a few dashes of the oil. We ate the cake. We felt good. I like when, you know, I eat these type of brownies or cakes and they're not that potent. Yeah, don't I don't like really feel like sitting there all day in like a crazy mind trip of thoughts because I ate too much. Oh, yeah. But I do like feeling great all day. And if you can just get the right ratio you're good to go um also we i went with some friends like years ago i was following fish around for the summer and i went to this uh, fish festival called it in i think 2003 and it was awesome it was in maine it was two days it was just fish it was like five or six hours of music of them each night and i remember the second night we got some brownies and I hadn't really done much with brownies at that time. It was, it was like 10 years ago and I ate the brownie and like an hour goes by and I didn't feel anything. And I look at my friend and I'm like, does this work for you? Like, did you feel anything? And she's like, no, like I don't feel anything. And like at that moment, I like turned my head to the left. I could have sworn I like saw my, like a streak of my face. Like time just slowed down and it hit me hard. I was like laughing my ass off. I was on the ground. I couldn't even get up. Like they were breaking the tent down and I couldn't even move. I was just lying on the ground like, yeah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> and it, it just goes to show like, you know, when you are eating those things, try a little bit first. And if it doesn't work, you know, in 30 minutes, like just wait, just keep waiting, you know, because sometimes this stuff kicks in. A lot of times people will take something and like, I've seen this a lot. People will take mushrooms. They'll eat, like, you know, they have an eighth of mushrooms, and they'll eat half. You eat the half, and you're like, 30 minutes later, you're like, oh, I don't feel anything, and you eat the other half. And then next thing you know, 30 minutes after that, you're, like, tripping balls. So I would suggest just be careful. Take your time. Try some first. Like, just let wait till it kicks in, because you have to digest it first. And don't, you don't want to over overeat because I've seen that and it's not pretty. Yeah, it's never pretty. Be patient. That's what we say. We have a disclaimer at the end of the video. Be responsible. Yeah, be responsible, <laughs> folks, if you're here's, out there. Here's another one. This is one of our favorite type of comments. I saw this video and I instantly went to go make it. I used rice instead of refried beans and it was still super amazing. Thanks for this recipe and I hope you keep making more videos like this. Love seeing stars blood seven seven seven. Love Thank seeing you. those type of comments. We really try to gear our recipes now for people out there who are actually gonna go make these things. You know mm -hmm. that can see it and instantly be like, "Listen, whoa! I have a few of those ingredients in my pantry right there. I can make this. Now mm -hmm. I have to go to the market." spend you know eighty dollars to make this awesome chicken pilliard or something like that no we have a you know microwave lasagna or toaster strudel some shit that you can make <laughs> that Ooh, night that. so and the other thing that's great about this comment is they changed the recipe which is great i used rice instead of refried beans we love to see people fucking with our recipes that's the whole point you know cooking you it's it's a freeing event you know you should be able to do whatever you want there are no boundaries you don't have to stick to recipes because if you get stuck trying to stick to one of these recipes you are missing ingredients or whatever for some reason where you live they don't have those type of ingredients we don't want you to be held back from making our food so please continue to make our food one and to fuck around with it, have fun with it, try different things. You know, that's the that's the joy of cooking for us. But yeah. thank you, Star Blood Seven Seven Seven. Yeah, keep writing in, keep commenting. You know, we're we're gonna try to do everything for everybody. Uh, we do what we feel inspired by. You know, and sometimes the food we do is a little more complicated, but we like doing the simple stuff because when you go on YouTube and you search for that, like it's very hard to find. And we're making free videos for people, uh, and you get to learn. 
It's pretty cool. You get to learn. That you get to great. learn. You get to try stuff. A lot of people seem to like it. You know, don't forget that when you're watching something, it might not seem, you know, it's like, hey, these guys can make more complicated stuff. It's like, sure, but t to be honest, a lot of the creativity and the, the complications comes from actually trying to simplify stuff and figure out, like, what's not out there because, you know, anyone can make chicken parmesan and follow a recipe and make it taste good, but we're, we're trying to figure out recipes that will excite people that don't have a lot of money and don't have a lot of space and... Uh, we know that they're out there. They're, they're asking for it. Um, but we also love making the other stuff. So you, we promise you, you stick around, you get a wide range of stuff. You never know what's going to happen in the Brothers Green Kitchen. Where did the Greenfield shirt come from? All right, last question. Um, where did the Greenfield shirt come from? I found it in a thrift store in college, and I could not buy it. You can't, you can't be you know, going through a thrift store... <laughs> and and see a shirt's got your name on it with your color. For anyone who does not know, buy it. our name isn't green, it's Greenfield. We've shortened it for many reasons. Yeah. But you, you know, if you see a shirt with your name on it randomly you buy it. Especially when it's three dollars. One other question. I wanna hang out with you guys. Well question. keep keep listening to this podcast. That's like hanging out with us, right? Yeah, uh, that's, the closest. <laughs> that's probably the closest you're gonna get. Actually, the other day we did a Skype cooking lesson with our first uh, donator of three hundred dollars, big fan of ours, who donated two, two to our 50. cause two fifty, and he had a private Skype lesson with us making mac and cheese, and it was fantastic. We hung out. We made a delicious chipotle mac and cheese or spicy mac chipotle, and cheese. Chipotle, yeah, spicy mac. And it was it's great. Chorizo. It was great. So if any of you guys want to hang out with us, donate to the cause. Yeah, we'll do. We'll, we'll rock it. Thank you guys for tuning in. Until next time. Until next time. Thank you guys. Keep supporting us, and we love your comments of all types. See you later. <laughs>